GFR, Glomerular Filtration Rate, is a laboratory measure for kidney function, renal function. It is not directly measured as laboratory value, but instead calculated. High numbers are good. 60 or higher is typically normal. There is no upper normal limit. 30 or lower is typically considered one of the definitions of chronic renal failure. Now you know what the acronym means. If you want to understand it better, stay on the video for another five minutes. Welcome to our medical teaching videos. My name is Johannes Wolf. This is recorded in January 2025. Let me show you how GFR is calculated and what to do with it. Most of us have two kidneys located in the back of the abdomen, the so-called retroperitoneum. They remove water-soluble waste from blood and make hormones that regulate blood pressure and erythropoietin, which stimulates the bone marrow to make more red blood cells. The cleaning function of the kidneys has two steps. First, the kidneys filter indiscriminately most of the blood water, the so-called plasma. In the second step, the kidneys take back from the filtrate what the body needs, such as the water, and leaves behind what the body does not need, such as the, cre the creatinine, now highly concentrated as urine. When we look at the kidneys in the microscope, we can see tubules and glomeruli. Glomerulus is Latin and stands in translation for ball of yarn. This is the kidney's filtration apparatus. This is what we measure with GFR. The tubular function, the reabsorption, is not measured with the GFR, nor is the hormone function of the kidneys. This is how the GFR is calculated. For any substance that is completely filtered and not reabsorbed, the GFR is measured over a specific period of time, typically one day, and then calculated as urine concentration times urine volume divided by plasma concentration. The units of the concentra concentrations cancel each other out. The unit of the GFR is volume over time, and it is given as milliliters per minute. Obviously, a large person's body with much blood and big kidneys needs a higher GFR to clean the blood than the body of a baby. There are tables with normal GFR values for each body size, but they are uncommonly used. Instead, it is custom to normalize the GFR with the body size so the normal value becomes relatively independent of body size, and it has been determined that the normalization to body surface area works best for this purpose. That is another calculated value, and it is calculated from body height and body weight. There are calculators on the internet. Please note, body surface area, or BSA, is not the same as BMI, body mass index. The average BSA of an adult was 1.73 meter square in the years when all this was developed. So, if you added another factor of 1.73 to the calculation, then the results did not change for an average adult. What you then get is GFR expressed as milliliter per minute per 1.73 meter square, and the number is the same for the average person. People are heavier now and the whole 1.7 meter square factor is somewhat awkward. As a medical society, we could probably do better than that, but GFR normalized that way is so deeply ingrained in all of us, I doubt a smarter solution will become standard anytime soon. Both numbers are correct, normalized and not normalized. So for instance, I have two meter square body surface area. If somebody picks the wrong formula to calculate my GFR, it doesn't make much of a difference. The error is small either way. But it can make a gigantic difference for little children, when the BSI, BSA can be as low as 
5 meters square. There are chemotherapeutic protocols where the drug dose is calculated by GFR. If someone takes the wrong formula and calculates the dose, the result can be devastating. If you want to learn more about that, look in PubMed under Carboplatinum and Pediatrics. Some of my colleagues have been brave enough to publish their mistakes as warning for the others. Let us all hope this will never happen to any of us. If you use GFR for any kind of decision, make sure what was calculated and what is in the decision algorithm is the same. The filtrated molecule that we use to calculate the GFR is typically creatinine, a protein waste product. To calculate it, you need to collect urine over 24 hours, measure the volume of the urine, send a sample to the lab, draw blood at the same time, send it to the lab, and when the results come back, you can calculate. For some chemotherapeutic agents, such as cisplatin, cyclophosphamide, it is very important to know that the kidneys are okay before you start, particularly in children. But collecting urine over 24 hours is not easy, particularly when the child is still in diapers. Also, adult patients don't like it. Therefore, we have developed methods to estimate the GFR without collecting urine. The most commonly used formula is the one from the two Canadian doctors, Crockford and Galt, and they have published it in 1976. You can find the original paper in Dr. Crockford's uh, ResearchGate posting. The other formulas, there are other formulas, the internet is full of them, and they do not come out the same. In the context of clinical trials, there are often eligibility criteria that define a minimum GFR for enrollment. If the protocol is written correctly, these criteria will also determine if estimating is allowed and give you which formula to use. If it was missed, use the Cockcroft Gold formula. Please note the original calculation is not normalized to 1.73 meters square BSA. But in case it is really important, I would still recommend to actually do the urine collection method. In practice, if the estimated value comes out too low, people often start collecting urine give fluids to the patient and then see if the calculation on the next day then allows the patient to be enrolled. This is an example of a clinical practice, a screenshot of my electronic medical records. As you see, I had a normal creatinine blood of 1.06 milligrams per deciliter and the computer has already calculated the GFR to be 77.6. It does not tell you what formula was used. But you see the val value was expressed as milliliter per minute per 1.73 meter square. And with that, the normal value is 60. My value is higher, so my kidneys are okay. In real patients, the GFR can indeed be too low. If you find that, I recommend to first check on the calculations. If the plasma creatinine and blood urea nitrogen BON are high, then there is indeed probably a problem with the kidneys. And the next medical question has to address why that happened and then how you can help the patient. The kidney function can be substituted with dialysis and complete kidney failure often leads to kidney transplantation, but often it is not quite so bad. If a drug has hurt the kidney, the drug needs to be stopped and often the kidney's kidney function gets a bit better. To find that out, it is important to follow the kidney function over time. And in that following, the estimated GFR is overestimated in its value. It carries no more information than the plasma creatinine without calculations, because for the same patient, the entire formula is not more than a fixed factor, regardless which formula you pick. It is impossible that the estimated GFR gets better or worse without the plasma creatinine taking the reverse direction. 
only urine collections could tell you more, and that is rarely done. And this is all I had planned to say about GFR. Our time is up. This video was brought to you by Oncology Consulting Wolf LLC, a company registered in the great state of Washington and solely responsible for the content of the video. There are no other sponsors. The content of the video is completely independent. Also, all mistakes that I made are my mistakes. There's nobody else's fault. There are many more of these videos. Check out the channel. Please forward the videos to people that might benefit from them. They are free. If you subscribe and click the bell, YouTube will give you a note when the next videos come out. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.